Good day to you ladies and gentlemen, YouTubers all, Apple Stump, Bushcraft, Stuff and Things, coming to you with Chapter 3 of the British 24-hour MRE pack sent to me by Polly of Polly's Hobbies and Things in the UK. So stand by, we'll see what's up for today. Alright, let's take a look at today's menu. First out of the block. Oatmeal block. Feels like a round hard cookie or cracker biscuit. We'll have that. Raspberry beverage powder. Takes 375 mils of water. I'll put that in the cup. It's going to be a glass to mix that in. We're going to use this spork that Polly sent to stir with. Here we have a main of steak and vegetables and another one of rice pudding. It'd be kind of a dessert like thing. And for a real dessert, we have Yorkie Original. I suspect that is a chocolate bar. We also have Polo Mint. And I think. Judging by the look on the O's on the logo there, they must be something similar to Lifesavers that we have here in the U.S. We'll have an antibacterial wipe to clean up with. Some V6 gum. And for a hot drink, we're going to have this Max Espresso. Maxpresso, along with creamer and a packet of sugar. So that's going to be our dinner today. We'll see how it all shapes up. All right, let's get started with this. We'll make us Max Maxpresso. It says it's an easy open pouch but Swiss Army knife makes it that much easier. Pour that into our double wall stainless steel cup. Take a look in there. Has kind of a salt and pepper look to it. And while we're at it, let's put in the creamer. Probably doesn't need it, but we'll put it in there anyway. And the sweetener, sugar. Probably doesn't need that either, but I'm not much of a coffee drinker, so the creamier and sweeter the better as far as coffee goes. And just happen to have some freshly boiled water here. Fill it right on up to the top. And thanks to Polly's spork, I'm going to stir it up. Oh, it smells good. That's always nice. When it smells good, it probably will be good, right? How many things do you know that smell good but aren't good? Well, I know one, for me anyway. And that is pipe tobacco. My dad smoked a pipe and I used to love to open the new pouches of Sir Walter Raleigh or the cans, Prince Albert sometimes, sometimes other brands, and smell them. They smelled absolutely wonderful. But once he fired up the pipe I had to clear out because I didn't really care for the tobacco smoke. So there we have that mixed up and now we're also going to mix up the raspberry drink mix. Same story here, we'll open it up with the Swiss Army knife. This happens to be a super tinker. I think we've had it as a guest peelable seal opener in the past and it's still doing its job today. 
So the instructions call for 375 mils of water, which turns out to be about 12 and a half ounces. And here we have some nice cold water. We'll put that in there. 12 and a half ounces is going to be about almost fill that glass up because that's about a 12 ounce glass. I'm going to call on the spork to do double duty today. I'll stir that up. And while it's dissolving, let's give this at Maxpresso a go, shall we? Cheers. Yep, pretty good. I can tell that it has a nice full-bodied coffee component to it. The creamer and the sweetener helped a lot and I have to say that I like it. This doesn't look like it's completely dissolved yet. I'll give it a taste anyway. Here's looking at you, kid. Tart and tangy and sweet with a definite raspberry flavor. Let's have another go at this Maxpresso. It's pretty good, really. Darn good. Okay. So we have a pot of boiling water coming to a boil over on the range. And this, the vegetables and steak, and this rice pudding are going in the hot water. I prefer rice pudding hot, and I prefer a stew-like meal to be hot as well. So while we're waiting for the water to come to a boil, let's take a look at this oatmeal block S. Yes. Let's see what that's all about, shall we? Once again, we'll call upon the Swiss Army knife scissor tool. Snip that off. Looks like it's a little crumbly. There it is. I'll put it up here so you can see it. It's broken, but that's no matter because I was going to chew it up anyway. Imagine that. And there's a few pieces inside the envelope. I'm just going to go ahead and get my taste out of those. So it bottoms up. Kind of crunchy, a little dry. There's a texture of some kind of shortening in there. It's almost like shortbread, actually, now that I think of it. It's good. I wouldn't uh, throw it out along the trail or anywhere else. That's a nice addition. Yes, indeed. I think we'll set this hand cleaner aside. Put the remnants of that biscuit or cookie in there. I have another slug of the raspberry. Boy, that's good. I'll tell you what, if you've been out hiking on the trail, out hunting, and you're thirsty, and had a lot of trail dust in your mouth, this would cut it just as good as any lemonade I've ever had, in my opinion. Have some more of this at Maxpresso. Once again, I'm not a big coffee fan. But that's okay. I would drink this anytime. Okay, we're going to go pop these two into the uh, boiling water and we'll be back to look at some other components here. So stand by. 
Something interesting about the oatmeal block, um, as I said, it tastes a lot like shortbread, but guess what? After a while, once the finer floury components of the biscuit are smoothed away or dissolved, there are actually particles of oatmeal in there, and it gives it a kind of a lingering chewiness. That's pretty neat, actually. Oh, we'll have another bite. And I'll just bet you that this Maxpresso would be really good with that. In fact, it might be a decent dunker. Yes, indeed. Alright, we're going to try dunking it. Just for the fun of it. Dunk it right in there. Turn it upside down so it absorbs into the cake or the cookie. That's quite good. It didn't saturate it, didn't make it soggy, but it did give it an extra espresso style flavor added to the cookie flavor. Quite good. If any of you have ever eaten a Lorna Dune, it's a Nabisco shortbread cookie. The texture of this is certainly uh, close to Lorna Dune with a little bit of extra crunch or texture added to it by the oatmeal uh, particles. So the rice pudding and the steak with vegetables are heating up on the stove as I speak. Let's open up the Yorkie original. Let's see what's in there. Once again, we call upon the mighty Victory Knox, or Victor Knox, however you want to say it. Swiss Army knife to bring it to the light of day. And there we have in several sections. Oh, that looks nice. Ooh, 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 ooh. Chocolate. What would the world be without chocolate? A dull and dismal place. I'm going to bite the corner off of there. And the other corner off of that one. That is just as smooth as it can be. A nice milk chocolate. Yum. I'd stack that up against any American chocolate I've ever had. Up to including Ghirardelli and um, what's another famous one? Cadbury. Hershey's it's especially. It's much smoother um, than Hershey's milk chocolate. I'd take this over Hershey's. We'll save the rest of it for a little later. Now let's see what the polo is all about. As I say, the O's here look like lifesavers and they're even embossed like lifesavers are. So let's pick a different blade, the Swiss Army knife, and we'll kind of score this a little bit. Maybe. Maybe we won't. Pretty tough paper. There we go. That's where it goes. We lopped off the top one or two off the stack. Looks like we got two there. And sure enough, they're embossed with the word polo. And they look just like white lifesavers. Let's smell them and see if they can smell any particular flavor. Some kind of mint. Try it out. It's a very uh, laid back mint flavor. Can't tell if it's spearmint. Although that's my first guess, spearmint. See if I can read the label and tell. It says the mint with the hole. It's not peppermint, it's not that strong. So I'm going to guess spearmint. 
Let's take a look at the V6. I'm given to understand this is gum, possibly with vitamins, or as they say across the big pond, vitamins. So let's see what this vitamin gum looks like. Looks like chiclets. They're a little dull, they're not really shiny, reflective white like chiclets. But, other than that, they look pretty much like them. Chiclets are a little bit more square, these are a little bit more rectangular. We'll give them a try after we're done eating the main courses. And use those as a palate cleanser. This is exceptional chocolate. If you can get a hold of some of this wherever you are, I'd give that a try if you like chocolate at all. Melts in your mouth. It's creamy, not bitter in the least. It's not overly sweet. It is excellent smooth chocolate. I've got a timer going over on the boiling water set for 15 minutes. So when that goes off, I'm going to bring over the steak with vegetables and the rice pudding. And they will go there and there respectively. And this will go away till I need it. Let's have another swig of this most excellent Maxpresso. I keep the spoon in there. Bottoms up. That's just about the strength I like it. So I put in a cup and a quarter of water in there. So that would be 10 ounces. And probably the proper strength for that would be 8. So it's just right for me. I don't really like coffee and especially not really strong, but this is fine. I would take this along with me on a camping trip to get warm anytime. And now on the cool side with the raspberry drink. Excellent. I wanted to drop another shameless plug for another friend of mine on YouTube, Julie Silversmith of Surviving Julie Silversmith Channel. She sent me a camera a while back. I haven't had a chance yet to take it out in the wilds and use it. I'm still using the same camera as before. It has to be plugged into an AC outlet because the battery charger gave up the ghost. But that's what I'm using to record this video. I'll use the camera Julie sent for one outdoors that I have in mind coming up soon. Looks like it's going to rain today and I probably am not going to do that today but I want to go camping with it. And I understand that Julie's son, also known as the kid, is uh, enamored of my metal military surplus cafeteria tray so uh, if he's not too unlucky he might see one of those show up in the mail for him. So we'll get back to the eating here in just a few minutes. Alright, here comes the main course. Steak and vegetables. Fresh from the boiling water and it's really hot. Try to move this out of the way. And here comes the rice pudding. Likewise quite hot. So for the safety of this most excellent chocolate, I'm going to move it off the tray so that heat doesn't transfer from these hot items and melt it. Uh, let's do the rice pudding first. Really nice envelopes. It would be good to reseal. I have that capability with a resealer, vacuum sealer that I have. I could put other things in there once they're cleaned out and reseal them. Rice pudding. Being a little bit stubborn. <laughs> okay, here it comes. Looks like it's got butter in it.
a look at that. Doesn't that look like butter? It does to me. Butter. Give that a try. See the yellow? I think that's butter. Mmm. I'm fairly certain it is. Nice and sweet. The texture of the rice is there. Very nice texture, as a matter of fact. And butter. How can you go wrong? The only thing that could make it better is bacon, right? Mmm. That is delicious. Have a little bit more and then I'll open up the steak and vegetables. Very good, Polly. Thanks very much for that. Yum, yum. Have a little swig of Maxpresso. Starting to cool down a little bit. That cup does give up its heat after a while. So this has a best before date on it of July of next year, 2020, and a packing date of 607 17, which uh, by European dates would be July 6th of 2017. So let's give the Victory Knox, Victoria Knox, Swiss Army Knife Scissors another opportunity to show their usefulness. What oh, smells good? Mm mm. Look at that. Okay, here we go. Ooh, wow. It's nice and hot. The envelope is almost too hot to hold on to, which is always good. <clears throat> so we have 300 grams in there. 315 calories in that whole mess there. Okay. Finally got to read it correctly on the label. So, we tried the rice pudding, now let's explore the steak and vegetables. And I can verify for you that there are vegetables in there. There's potatoes, I saw a green pea, and maybe some carrot fragments. It looks pretty well put together. There's a green pea. No question about that. Right there. Now well, let's dig in. Here's your good health. Mmm. That is good. Might be a mushroom there. We'll try that out now. Yep. Well, maybe not. Whatever that was, it looked like a mushroom. It was pretty good. So the meat is nice and tender, but not mushy like you would expect for something that's been pre-cooked and then in storage for a long time. It has a stringiness to it like you would expect from a maybe flank steak or certain ways that they cut the meat. Potatoes are soft, but not mushy. And the gravy component. It's very tasty. It's not barbecued and it's not overly smoky. It's just a nice beefy flavor. And that is a chunk of meat to deal with. Mm. So right there is some carrot. I, mean, I said I saw carrots and peas, potatoes, and meat. Quite good. I don't know whether I'll need this alcohol-free cleaner, hand cleaner or wipe when I'm done because I haven't made a mess yet of my hands. I might when I get into that chocolate. This is superb. This would be a welcome, a welcome meal anywhere. Camping, picnic, out on the trail, any place. Cold weather or warm, it wouldn't make any difference. It's still good. And 
I am going to eat all of this. With a little bit of raspberry chaser. Paulie sent a nice note along with the goodies in that box. And I've heard from him since, saying that he was pretty happy with the way I divided those three meals up. And wishing that I would enjoy it, which I am, immensely. Man, that's good. I don't believe I've had beef stew out of a can or even out of a, an American military MRE that was quite this good. Some of them are pretty tasty, especially if you're hungry, but this is excellent. Have some more of this buttery sweet rice pudding. I'm going to try and mix the butter in there. That's got to be what that is. I don't know what else is yellow and looks like oil. <clears throat> Unless it's uh, some kind of corn oil, but it tastes like butter. There we go. Mmm. Just like mom used to make. Only she put raisins in it. But it's quite good without them. Yum. Yes, indeed. Scored a good one with this one. Seen some more carrots show up here. More and more. A few more peas. The carrots are becoming more evident. They must have been separated somehow in the bottom of the package or whatever. But there they are nonetheless. Good stuff. This is pretty much cooled off now, but it's okay cold. Not really cold, it's more like room temperature. Getting down to the bottom of this. This pork itself has an interesting texture. It's rather rough on the bottom. Smooth on top and rough on the bottom. I don't know why that is. It's just interesting. Holds quite a bit more than the American military MRE spoons do. Which is okay because you get a good hearty bite with it that way. There I think it's a big hunk of carrot on that one right towards the back. Yum. I'm going to mix flavors now. They're all going to end up in the same place anyway. That's got to be butter. Tastes like it. Oh man. I'm getting stuffed. That's quite a big meal. I think I can finish it, but it's going to be iffy. I don't want to waste any of this. It's so good. Mmm. That 
That is just delightful. Testing out the scooping ability of this little spork. It's got a nice long handle on it. Look at that. My cat seems to approve. He probably hopes I'll put the tray down on the floor so he can eat it. What's left? He likes yogurt, so he might like this. Oh, yum. Rice pudding is still warm, it's just right. That was spectacular. We'll top that off with a square of this delicious chocolate. Here we go. Hmm. Whoever made that knows how to make chocolate. Very good. Melt in the mouth. Smooth, not a bit grainy. Mmm, just right. That's exceptional. So we had a couple of these polos, which are essentially like spearmint lifesavers. We're going to chew this gum up here in a minute. B6 gum. Have another sip of raspberry. Very nice. Now, oh, just because I want to see what this is all about, I'm going to open it. It's nice and moist. Not dripping wet, but quite moist. And a nice size, you could not do your, not only do your fingers, but you could do your hands and your face with that if you needed to. That's a very nice big towelette. Quite good. <clears throat> okay, well that'll do it for this edition. This has been Apple Stump Bushcraft Stuff and Things, reviewing part three of the 24-hour meal pack sent to me by my buddy Polly of Polly's Hobbies and Things in the UK. And Polly, once again, we appreciate your generosity and kindness in sending that. And there's the old Union Jack for you. And we'll see you next time, folks, with another review or something else. You never know what's coming. Thanks for watching. Take care. Adios.